let us uh, introduce the last speaker. It's Luca Morricone from ELES. Uh, Luca Morricone is Test Application Division Manager of LOE, uh, e, uh, ELES Semiconductor Equipment Company. In 1990, Luca received his electronic engineering degree from University of uh, Perugia, Italy. And then he joined, uh, you know, uh, yes, till now. Uh, Luca has lots of experience in semiconductor reliability uh, testing. Uh, currently, he takes charge of the uh, um, uh, Solution roadmap management at e uh, uh, e e ELES company and work to define and deploy the technical roadmap of the their company uh, of ELES solutions. Let us welcome the speaker, uh, more uh, more recognition. Sorry, Luca. Yeah. Good afternoon to everybody. I'm Luca Moriconi, R&D manager at Teles. It is our pleasure to be here at the TestConix presenting our innovative approach to the reliability test. Just let me spend some words about us. LS is a public company founded in 1988. It's a worldwide leader in reliability test solution for semiconductor market, offering structured solution from test system to application and consultancy services. The device reliability is becoming today more and more important. And LS want to offer to its clients solutions that effectively help to reach the zero defects, which is the primary goal for mission critical and safety applications. In such application, in fact, failures are not acceptable anymore. Failures are not just a bore, but could be lethal. To meet these expectations, LS developed an innovative test methodology called RETE. What's RETE? RETE means Reliability Embedded Test Engineering and is the cornerstone of the approach we developed to address the challenges of modern semiconductors in terms of quality, reliability and cost. It is a comprehensive approach addressing multiple areas, not only tests and reliability, but also safety and security. From the design stage, integrating DFT solutions and IP to standardize and automate the test development and the test equipment environment for both testing and reliability purposes. RATE has been successfully applied on the field to achieve different results. For example, cost of test reduction, leveraging on a massive parallel test approach increase the de failure detection, faster time to market. The standard approach we see in this picture foresees a strong interaction between design, manufacturing and test. But reliability is considered late in the process and often is disconnected from design. But the new expectations in terms of cost, reliability and quality on semiconductor ICs are no more compatible with such approach. A shift left is needed, addressing reliability and quality together with design and test early in the process. This new approach creates a direct link between reliability and the other areas like design, test and manufacturing. It is done by means of a structured interaction to develop an innovative test methodology for ICs, stress and test on the same platform. Design for reliability test step. It's performed at the science stage and is fundamental to shape the device testability in line with a massively parallel test architecture that can support the device qualification strategy starting from design validation to qualification and production. The massive test data generated applying RATE methodology in all steps are fundamental to detect early design and manufacturing process issues. The other benefit is the ability to move 
all the DFT tests from a standard ITE to a massively parallel architecture, minimizing the overall cost of tests. Ready approach is developed in three main steps, as you can see in this picture. The first one is Rate A at IC design stage. To prepare the IC with all the testability features to maximize full triggering detection capabilities on a massively parallel architecture. Then we have the reliability test engineering on a massively parallel tester, developing a test program with an effective stress and test matrix, leveraging on all the testability features introduced at the science stage, and able to collect all the relevant data to better characterize the IC failures. Then finally, we have the third step, which is rate B during failure analysis phase. All the test data collected can be easily interpreted to drive product and process improvement. Now we're going a little bit more in detail into the rate A phase. Rate A starts with a design analysis to define which are the required features with respect to the target device and the required reliability targets. The second step is to finalize a DFRT plan by creating all the guidelines for the insertion of the required functions. The target, as we said, is to insert all the necessary IPs according to the relevant mission profile related to the different qualification trials in order to enhance full triggering and detection observability on a massively parallel tester. The original design that we can see represented here will be enriched by this new feature. We can see here we have inserted some block in order to better detect failures and to better collect test data. Here we can find a list of the main rated IPs that can be applied for the different areas of the semiconductor IC. Temperature and current sensor are, for example, very useful to detect the correct level of stress and possible anomalies in real time during all the test trials. Analog to digital converters and analog beasts are useful to cover the analog domain, usually critical in terms of access and observability on a massively parallel test architecture. When it's not possible or convenient to insert a testability feature inside a C, because of, for example, silicon constraint or cost constraint, a different approach can be applied. Both features, for example, are IPs mounted directly on a test board, and they are able to measure different parameters or provide additional stress features during the test trials. The soft mist approach can be also applied. In this case, we have a software code that will be loaded and executed inside the chip by the internal CPU in order to exercise as much as possible and test a specific macro cell, like for example, an embedded NVM, and collecting all the relevant test data. A new IC design must consider the full set of functionalities necessary for the different trials, both for qualification and manufacturing tests. Many functionalities are common among the different trials. First of all, the use of a serial communication interface allows a simple and robust test approach. It allows to activate tests and collect all the relevant data with only fewer use, thus maximizing the parallelism. Device identification by unique ID is necessary for traceability and allows to easily correlate data from different steps, including the reliability trials. Also, diagnostic registers play an important role in capturing failure signatures that are very useful to better characterize IC failures. And of course, all the standard DFT functions like memory based, logic based, or scan are fundamental to maximize tense and stress coverage on all the device sections. How we can represent the difference between a device processed with rate approach and a device processed without it? We can compare, for example, an IC to a car. Applying the standard approach without rated, the car dashboard will be very poor in terms of information. We can see here on the figure at the top. Only basic alarms will be showed, 
in this case it's very difficult and costly to understand from where the failure comes and how to fix it. While in a rather compliant case, we can see on the bottom side of the picture, lots of information are collected and available for an easy interpretation. Shortly, we spend less time to understand the issues and we can better concentrate on all the efforts on design and manufacturing improvement. The Rate AI methodology is supported by an automated tool, which is called the Rate Analyzer which carries out all the necessary the FRT step in an automatic way. So, let's take an original design database. This database will be reviewed by the Rate Analyzer tool in order to identify all the missing features with respect to the FRT requirement and that the FRT plan will be created, indicating all the necessary improvements some features can be inserted inside the chip, as we said, but others can be developed outside, like BOST, when we don't have enough space inside the chip or is not convenient in terms of cost, for example. The rate analyzer output can be connected directly to an EDA tool for an automatic insertion of DFT features. In this way, the original database will move towards an instrument database. Another option for this environment is the possibility to generate optimized test patterns in order to maximize full triggering for the specific technology with a direct link to the test program development environment. All the design for features that we insert at this design stage can address multiple areas at the same cost, testing, reliability, functional safety, and even security. The standard approach without RETE foresee, for example, when it comes to a manufacturing test flow, um, into a test flow that is split in many different steps. The stress is performed on a burning system, while the final test on a standard ATE, which you can see here on the left side of the picture. Stress and test, in this case, are separated, lacking a full reliability coverage. The other issue is that the low parallelism during the test phase on standard ATE causes an high cost of test. So, the other cornerstone of the rate approach is the use of a universal massively parallel tester that enables the possibility to perform stress and test in the same step. This allows the best triggering and capture of IC failure and an effective screening of critical ICs in order to match the stringent quality and reliability targets of mission-critical applications. All the failures collected can be classified and relevant data stored to populate a so-called enriched left from fail database. Moreover, all the TFT tests that we can move from ATE to test during Bernin can impact a lot of cost of test. We can reduce the cost of test a lot. We talked about uh, data collected during the manufacturing test flow. This data will populate a detailed database, which is uh, filled with real-time failure data and other interesting information that are collected by our platform. This offers an opportunity to refine the failure analysis. So in, in this case, we have the rate B that closed the loop multiplying the value of the solution adopted with rate A, all the P inserted uh, at the design stage, exploiting the information collected during the test trial. And this will drive a continuous and quantifiable reliability improvement process. The failure analysis phase can be simplified also thanks to the support of a software analysis tool, able to classify failures, for example, by device ID. We have the traceability inside the device to show failure distribution in time and the trend of key reliability parameters connected also to diagnostic data. This is a fundamental step towards improving failure rate and decrease early failures. The data collected during the overall test and reliability characterization process can be fundamental input also to set up an adaptive test and test strategy. 
The test flow on a massively parallel platform can change on the fly based on results coming from different steps from different data sources such as probe, final test, aging data result, big data, non-conforming lot. In this case, the result is a more calibrated stress and test matrix, which is able to guarantee high quality reliability at minimum cost, which is in line with the current and future needs of the semiconductor market. As we anticipated in previous slides, many of the features required by rate approach are also can address multiple areas at the same cost. Testing, reliability, manufacturability, and even safety and security. There are several commonalities, in fact, between reliability and functional safety. There are different pers perspectives of a larger concept of dependability. That means the quality of the de delivered services within a certain time period. The ISO 26262 standard requires to adhere to a structured testability methodology to address systematic failures, including testability during development, production, service, and operation. This is in line with what we offer with RETE. BIST introduced for functional safety requirements, for example, can be conveniently applied during the execution of a quality reliability trials, thus increasing the observability of device behavior under the application of an accelerated stress condition. Moreover, functionality embedded in design to address reliability and testing requirements also play a role as a safety mechanism to address, for example, random failures. RATE also addresses the implementation of IPs that can be reused for security as well as for reliability testing and safety. For instance, as we anticipated in the previous slides, embedded current sensors are important monitoring features to detect possible IC functional anomalies, but can play a role in identifying anomalous behavior that can lead to the identification of a cyber attack, both during the test and during the operational life of the device. Then novel testing techniques can be used to identify the presence of hardware trojans. Hardware trojans may induce systematic small alteration of parameters in terms of power, current, etc. That, with the appropriate sensing circuitry, may be detected and recorded in a testing environment like the platform. The content of the failure database can be analyzed using statistical techniques to highlight the patterns leading to the identification of the additional structures in the device. Here we collected some success stories showing the benefits obtained applying rate to the different device families. In the first case, the combination of rate approach and LS massively parallel tester allowed to perform stress and tests on more than 30,000 ICs in parallel. The result was a reduction of the cost of test by 70% versus the standard approach. The second case is related to an automotive SOC for ADAS application where the quality and reliability targets were very stringent. The qualification flow allowed an improved fault triggering and detection to capture more defects related to the C analog IPs and high-speed interface domain. The customer was able to fix early the design issues and check the effectiveness of the modification introduced. In the last case, an high-end processor for server and data center market the customer, leveraging on the test data collected since the pre-qual stage, was able to perform an early the same improvement. To summarize, we showed how RETE allows to optimize in a sustainable way the productive process using an approach that is structured, universal and multifunctional at the same stage. Universal as we can see, because we can approach different device families from SOCs, MEMS, smart power, or memories. And then universal because we can approach with a universal test environment the development of test program for all the different device families. So leveraging an universal test platform and EDE, we can approach um, and match the stringent quality of the reliability targets of mission-critical devices 
and the possibility to match at the same time functional safety and cybersecurity requirements at the minimum cost and time to market. Thanks a lot for your attention and for your time. We are available for any clarification you may need. Thank you, Luca. Thank You're you, welcome. Luca. Yeah. Um, it, uh, right now, the uh, reliability, uh, desire for reliability become more and more hot topic. And then yeah. especially for automotive, uh, yes, uh, IC and, and also for bio IC. So it is very good uh, information uh, for share with us. Uh, welcome any question from the audience. Question is, when the reliability test ship to the lab, what impact do you think the ship will be bring to the final test, like a package test? <laughs> Okay, uh, as we said before, um, in our approach, we have to uh, start thinking to the, uh, the final uh, step test and the reliability uh, test before, before, in order to have all the uh, IP that are necessary to perform uh, a very powerful uh, test and test strategy, meaning the standard approach uh, foresee uh, a final test on a standard ETE with low parallelism. And um, in our case, um, lots of, the, of tests can be moved to a massively parallel test structure. So um, uh, we, can, uh, we can have a more powerful methodology. We can uh, uh, put together uh, stress and test in order to better activate uh, all the failures, in order to perform, for example, high voltage stress on a massively parallel tester. In this case, uh, the quantity, the amount of tests performed on a, a standard ATE will be reduced. So we have a, redu a reduction in terms of cost of test, for example, and also the reliability uh, screening is more effective because we can have the opportunity to exploit all the um, the burning time, for example, uh, and this usually in automotive uh, is something that is applied uh, on edge technologies like ADAS, for example, or on critical uh, application. And then during the, the burning, we can uh, increase the, um, the um, reliability screening, putting together uh, interleaving stress and test phases. But this can be done only if we prepare uh, the design testability uh, since the beginning at the design stage, because we, what we found on the market is something that's not homogeneous, let me say. Uh, some devices uh, are not prepared to perform um, tests on massively parallel tester. We see that some device families are more in line, but others are not. For example, system on chips with uh, embedded NDMs uh, could be uh, more uh, in line, but for example, smart power or MEMS uh, devices are not. And so our effort is uh, to prepare also um, solution for this kind of devices in order to have this approach uh, adopted on a wide uh, number of device families. Thank you, Luca. And uh, they have uh, still some uh, five minutes and then um, uh, they have one question is, we have a mention approach. Uh, does this uh, design for reliability you have been present can be used for IC security? Can you uh, share more? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rete, as we uh, explained, um, is positioned to extend um, the, the approach also to cybersecurity issues. Um, in last years, there are a trend that uh, um, foresee um, that uh, uh, different features can cover uh, different areas like reliability, safety, test and security, because uh, we have to take into account that the more silicon we add in order to enter such kind of a fee and the more the cost um, on silicon area, uh, will um, have an impact. 
So it's natural that when we uh, work uh, um, adding the, the FRT features, we take into account also how to uh, use this kind of feature also for uh, to detect possible vulnerabilities or threats in the design. So functionality like this, for example, or sensor, um, have been known to play a role in detecting threats and attacks uh, at uh, IC to IC device. So these functionalities are the same that we use to enhance uh, the reliability test. So basically, we think uh, in order to, uh, to have uh, the reliability features uh, in line also with uh, uh, the detection of possible uh, cybersecurity issues, okay? Then uh, the, other, the, other, uh, the other aspect is that uh, we can use our platform um, to try to uh, violate the device, uh, putting in evidence, for example, possible weakness or vulnerabilities. For example, we can use to accelerate the stress of the device to, uh, to accelerate aging in order to uh, cause failures. And then we can exploit this to gain access to the device, for example. Or we can run special test programs uh, aimed at the detection of unexpected behavior. For example, if you have a current sensor inside, uh, we want to see a specific uh, current profile. While in case of, for, for example, the presence of uh, an hour trojan, we will see an anomalous behavior. So we are able with the same sensor to detect both reliability and, for example, cybersecurity issues. Thank you very much. And I have, uh, uh, yeah, I have two, uh, two, many, uh, two minutes. Uh, I have a question. Do you think the design for test, this concept, will be uh, in the future, will be replaced the wafer label bringing test? Okay, okay. for sure. Um, we talked about uh, package level test. Uh, yes. And for sure, we know that uh, uh, also wafer level burning techniques in some cases are applied. But I think we think that uh, for sure, especially in uh, mission critical markets, uh, all the steps that comes after the, <laughs> the wafer, so basically packaging and, and so on, have an impact in terms of uh, part per millions. And so basically, if you want to go towards a zero defect uh, product, uh, probably um, the package level test and stress will be in any way uh, something that uh, it could be very important to reduce, especially because now we are moving towards, especially in automotive, more and more edge technologies. If you think about EDAS market, for example, uh, we are going to use uh, very, very new technologies. In this case, uh, and for the reason I, I speak before, packaging assembly issues, we think that wafer lab reliability could be um, an important step, but probably it must be, um, let me say, uh, also package level stress and test strategy uh, have to be applied also in the future. So it are complementary and uh, for sure, the, um, the package level test could also rely on data coming from wafer level. And so if we put together these two strategies, probably, with this combination, we could have, uh, we could reach the target to have a, a zero defect product. Thank you very much. So you mean currently with a level test for, uh, with a level bringing, for example, a stretch test, uh, still my remind, and we have a combination with new technology, right? Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, I and uh, last, uh, but not least, I want to thank our sponsors again who made today possible. Uh, Test Tooling Solutions Group is our premier sponsor. JDT Technology is our honored sponsor. Our distinguished sponsors are NIDIC SVTCL, Smith's Interconnect, TSC, and Feldman Engineering. Uh, please visit their uh, listings on the Test Connect website. Reach out to their staff. With any questions, they're there for you, and they're happy to engage with you in any way you want to engage. And also, I'd like to thank our media partners as, as Silicon Semiconductor China from ACT and EE Times China, who's also producing their Dumb It Double Summits 
a conference coming up next month. So uh, you can click onto these on the website for additional information. And then uh, once again, an extra special thank you to Test Tooling Solutions Group, uh, who has a wide range of solutions and uh, they would like to hear from you. So please take a moment and thank them again. And I uh, would like to thank everybody else, uh, everybody on for attending. Uh, tomorrow's uh, session three uh, will be on high frequency and 5G and high speed data. Uh, it will start at 9 a.m. Shanghai time. A reminder, the Zoom links are different every day. So you'll need to use Thursday's Zoom link, or if you're on Billy Billy, the same link will work uh, tomorrow. So we look forward to having everybody join us there. And with that, I with that, I would like to wish everybody a, a great rest of their day. And I look forward to uh, meeting with everybody tomorrow. So thank you.